Well, good morning, everybody. Danny back from Deep South Homestead with Ms. Wanda. We're right here before the sun comes up, guys. This is our pink eye purple hole pea patch. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, uh, one thing about field peas, you want to pick them before the sun hits them. Because if you wait till the sun gets on them, they wilt really quick and they don't hold up as well. Uh, and everybody's been asking the question, how do I know when to pick them? I mean, what are they supposed to look like? Well, we're going to walk in here and I'm going to show you the various stages you can pick them at. Now, when we come in here, we can look at them here. You see a couple of different stages here. They're like this right here. Now, you don't want this one. We're going to, we can take this one and we can take this one. And even if you want to, a stage like this right here is really okay. But now if you're using a sheller, uh, we have one. We're not using it right now, but uh, it, it's not best to use these type right here. It's better to wait till they get like this or even more purple. Now, even over here, I'm looking at one that's a little bit more purple. Right now, we are hand shelling because there's not a lot of peas getting ready at one time. So we, we will pick them in this stage right here because they shell really easy at this stage right here. You know, we would prefer them with a machine if they was a little bit more purple. And I'll look and see if I might find a couple of them like that. Now here's one right here that's, uh, this right here is really prime of what you're looking at to be shelled with a machine. If you let them go a lot longer than this, uh, the hull loses its moisture and it makes it a little bit more difficult to shell with the machine. Uh, it still shells fine by hand, but once they get uh, where they're not greenish, a little bit of tint look to it like that, the hull becomes more like paper and it begins to actually go into the drying stage. And it's really, uh, it's really not as good, you know, for shelling at that point. It's more for saving seeds, I guess you might say. Along with this, my father, when he used to make us pick peas, of course, this is nothing compared to when we were kids. When we were kids, we had like an acre of peas to plant and pick. My dad would come through and, you know, we'd pick like this and this. And then my dad would reach down and he would go over the peas like this and he'd grab like, like say here's one right here. He'd grab one like this right here, which really doesn't have any peas in it at all. And what dad would say, I like to have a few snaps in with my peas when I eat them. And this will just be snapped. You'll pull the ends off of it and string it, and it'll be snapped just like snap beans would. And Dad liked those mixed in with his peas. And that's one thing that uh, that we had to do when we were picking peas. Now, he didn't want us to pick many of them. Just pick a few as we went along, one or two, to add in with it as snaps. Now, believe it or not, I picked these yesterday, and we got a rain last night. And I told Wanda, I said, well, probably first thing in the morning, these peas are going to be ready after that rain because we've had a whole week of almost 100 degree heat index temperatures. And this coming week will be another week of 100 degree heat indexes. So I told her, I said, this little bit of rain we get is going to make these peas just jump. So probably this week at some point, I can, I can see where we'll probably be picking them by the five gallon bucket fulls because... These things, they're just, they're stuck down in here everywhere. I mean, you look at all the peas on all this. I mean, guys, they're everywhere. And one of the big issues with peas in the south is deer. Now, what I've been doing, I will tell you, we got Mr. Billy's bone sauce on these trees around the outside edge of my garden here. Uh, that has, hands down, has worked fantastic. Not a, we ain't had a deer track in here. And also we have up the uh, the agrifab on our tomato cages stuck around and on the fences. And when the wind blows, that kind of waves. That keeps other creatures away. On top of that, since I've been having to have antibiotics to get this tooth ready to pull, I can't use my urine in the high tunnel or anything like that. So what I've been doing is I've been bringing it and pouring it on the grass out here around the outside of the pea patch and that gives a human urine scent which also causes deer and animals to stay away so we're actually incorporating all these things in together because guys i'm going to tell you what 
to have a pea patch like this in the deep south and the deer not eat it is almost unheard of. But hey, with all the things that we're trying, they're working. And at this point, had an, I told one of this was as we was eating breakfast this morning about five o'clock, I told her, I said, there used to be an old timer that lived down the road right here who told me, he said, there's one surefire way to keep the deer from eating your peas. When they get to this stage is he said, just stand out here in the middle of the morning and say, you know what? I'm going to pick these peas tomorrow morning. Y'all hear me? And then turn around and pick them right then. He said, that's the only surefire way in the South you're going to get these peas. That's what the old people used to say. So, uh, but anyway, I want to take y'all along and show you a little bit about picking pink eyed purple hulls and the stages you can pick them in, what they can look like and, uh, just a little bit about it, you know, because some people ask the question. They don't really know. If you don't know, you don't know. And we wanted to do this little bit of a video to show you what you can, uh, you know, the stages. And when we get through picking them, we'll show you what, how many we get. And Ms. Wanda may even want to take you and show you after she shells them and all that kind of stuff because that's one of her pastimes sitting on the porch over here while I'm working. She likes to shell the peas. My deep south rise and shine full of coffee. The sun's coming up. Daddy's putting me some peas. And this morning there's not a lot of them. So while he works over there, I'm just going to sit and shell. And uh, these are usually pretty easy. I just work my way down and then rake those peas out and they have a little film on them but that'll come off when you wash them and you see the pink eyes the pink eyes on these and uh, we'll show you kind of how I cook them in a few minutes but when I was little this is what we helped my granny all summer shell peas. That's how she made her money. She sat and shelled peas all day. And she made us help her. <laughs> and we got paid too. We got paid a silver dollar at the end of the week. And two, one side. Let me show y'all. Get it to that. When you're looking at the pea, you want the side that looks like it has the vein running down it, not the other. I mean, it, that side does too, but this is the top side. 
and you can break off either end and uh, it'll pull that string and then it just it's almost like zipping them and there is a pee called a zipper pee <laughs> but and if you start with the other end break it open there if you want to many ways to shell peas there's not just one way and then you just rake them out So I just kind of wash them around in the water. And you see I put Danny's snaps in there also. That's what a snap looks like. And you see this, this is the husky stuff that's in there. That's what I'm washing out. You want to try and get that out of there. See it on my hands? It'll come to the surface and you can just kind of pick it out. Even if you don't get all this pulpy stuff out, when you cook it, that will come to the surface and you can skim it off. You can do skimmings, but you want the peas and not the husk. And it just takes a few minutes. And if you've got a lot of peas, you're not really that worried about it. Uh, it'll stick to your hands pretty much. But if you've got a lot of them, you do the best you can and you skim off the rest. I rinsed the peas a second time and you see there's a little bit more husk in there. But overall, I got most of it out. The peas are looking really good and clean. I have Danny's snaps over in there. We're fixing to cook these peas. We put uh, enough water to cover them and go up about an inch and a half to two inches above them because you don't want them cooking out of water and you got to keep your eyes on them. We put them on about an eight and um, Danny fried bacon this morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of this bacon over in there and you can add as much as you want to taste. That's up to you and as it cooks it will flavor them. We bought the Redmond Mineral Salt, and this is what we've been using, I don't want, but about maybe half a teaspoon, and we'll check it, and if that's not enough, we'll add some later. And you can season with whatever. You can just cook them in water and salt. Um, I have a jar of bacon grease that I've saved. I put it in the fridge, and when I want some, I just take a spoonful out. Bacon is the best thing for field peas, but you can use other things. Um, you can add a few onions. I'm going to put a couple of bay leaves over in here. Uh, that's something that I usually do. Um, you could put some onions or garlic or whatever you like in your peas, or you could just do them plain, add a little butter, um, a touch of olive oil if you just want it, something like that. Anything goes. I'll let it come up to a boil. I'll skim off any of the little imperfections that's still there. I'll turn it down to about a four, and then I'll cover it. Now, you don't want to cover it right at this point, and you want to keep your eye on it, because when it starts boiling, the foam can come up, and it will boil over. So you got to be very, very careful and get that skimming off to keep it from boiling over. All right, we've got them up to a boil, and you see they're still kind of green looking, and Danny's helping me. By taking off the little bit of skimmings, there's not much in this because I cleaned them pretty good. But you can see it's just a little bit. And we just try to get that out. It'll boil more and it'll come up next to the side. It'll be around the outside edges of the pot, yeah. And we're going to cut this down to about a four and put a lid on it for about 15 minutes. And 
beautiful green looking peas. They're holding their color. Not amazing. And you can still see the little pink eyes. Now we're going to turn this off and let this sit for until we're ready to eat. But, y'all, isn't that beautiful? Pink eyed purple whole peas cooked the way the old people used to in the South. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.